Hello and welcome to this very special training DVD. I'm Andrew Kramer and we are going to be going over some advanced techniques for Adobe After Effects 7. Alright, here it is, After Effects 7. Before we get into the program, I actually want to go under the hood and go Edit, Preferences, and to the General tab. Now, I just want to set up a few things here, and this is how I work, may not be exactly how you might work, but I will explain the benefits and the reasons behind maybe what I may be doing. So, first of all, I'm going to set my levels of undo to 60, okay? Instead of just 30, then I want to go down to the auto save, and I want to turn on automatically save projects. This is a new feature, and I want to save every five minutes, and we'll save up to five versions. Now. I'm going to go to the user interface colors and I want to turn the color brightness all the way down. So as you can see, it's dark, it looks nice, easy on your eyes, and we can also shut off these gradients. As you can see here, we shut those off, kind of have more of a flat look all around. Personally, this is how I prefer to use it. The old version had a darkened feature but was not nearly as great as this one. So I'm gonna hit OK and now we're gonna get into After Effects. Now the first thing I want to do is import some media. So we can double click here on the project window or if we just uh, toggle over to some media items we can just drag them in. So I'm gonna take this interior green screen movie, drag it in, take this HDR image of the car and drag it in. Then I'm gonna make a new folder, call it footage drag both of these items inside of it and then bring down the arrow to see the items. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a new composition. So what I'm going to do is take this interior green screen footage, drag it into the new composition area, and I've created a composition. Here's the timeline, here's the monitor window. Now as you can see, if I resize it, it automatically resizes it to the percentage that it can fit. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just turn that to 50 so that I don't get any false pixels, but it is a very handy tool. Now, before I move on, I want to go ahead and change my OpenGL to Adaptive Resolution. Usually OpenGL uh, really, really helps out, except I'm screen recording and I don't have my display acceleration, so it's going to actually kind of slow me down. We have the toggle action safe here. If we uh, click on here, we can check out the grids, guides, rulers, etc. We have the resolution of the monitor. We can change it to half resolution, and this way we can get faster drawing times when we're just scrubbing through complex compositions, etc. We also have the toggle transparency switch that I will be using very frequently later on in this tutorial DVD. If I drag this video off to the side, toggle the transparency, you see there's nothing beneath it except emptiness. So let's go ahead and take that back. The next thing I want to point out is our timeline. Now down here there's a few things about the timeline. We have the current time indicator and we can drag that on top of this ruler to go back and forth through time. We have the work area bar here. We have layers. If I duplicate this layer I can hit control D and layers can be offset in time. They can also be trimmed. If you put your mouse to the very end you can drag it in and you can see that now that clip is now short. Items in the timeline can be deleted by being selected and hit delete. I'm going to go ahead and line this back up with the zero marker by holding alt and hitting home. And now I'm going to set the work area back to the entire composition length, which is four seconds here. Also, let me go over some of these switches here. We have the high quality, low quality switch. We have the frame blending switch, which allows frames to be blended if you have speed changes. We have the motion blur switch, which allows for intermediate frame motion blur. We also have the adjustment layer switch and the 3D layer switch. Now, the 3D layer switch allows for layers to be moved around in 3D space. So when you turn the 3D layer switch on, you see that this gizmo comes up that allows us to move it around in 3D space. We can also rotate it by taking this rotation tool and spin it around like so. Also, I want to point out how to use motion blur. If the switch is on and we create two keyframes, say at the beginning with the P, I'm going to bring up the position. We can also just hit this arrow, go down to the transform properties, turn on the position keyframe by hitting the stopwatch, moving forward, pushing the frame off, 
in the composition window. And if we take these two keyframes and put them closer together, you can see the animation is very quick. Now if we turn on the motion blur for the timeline or the composition in the global switch here, you'll see that the motion blur draws itself. Okay, let's go ahead and reset this by hitting reset and shutting off the position stopwatch. You can also reset a parameter by just right clicking on it and choosing reset. Now if I duplicate this layer, control D, I can change the transfer mode of it. So if I toggle F4, I now can see my transfer modes. Now there's a bunch of them in here, but you'll see they all do a very different thing. Now if I change this one to additive, it adds itself to what's beneath it. Now we have the screen mode, we have the multiply mode, and you're probably going to want to experiment with these modes to see exactly what they do, but they're a very, very powerful part of After Effects. Next, we have the parenting function. So say if I make a new layer, just a white solid layer, I can now set position keyframes for this white layer. So I'm going to move it down here to the bottom, scale it down, and stick it right here in the bottom corner. Then I'm going to go to the transform properties, turn on the position keyframe and the scale keyframe and the rotation keyframe. Then I'm going to move forward in time, scale this image up, and just slightly rotate it by clicking and dragging left and right into the value box. This can also be done for every parameter instead of just clicking and typing in a number. Now as you can see this white box scales up and rotates. Now, if I take this parent switch, which is right here, on my interior green screen layer, which is this layer, I can take this pick whip, drag it to the white solid layer, and it will actually conform itself to the movements of my white solid, which has animation on it. Now the good thing about this is you won't have to do complex animations twice, or if you want something to follow another layer, the parenting switch can really be handy. And as you can see, you can do tons of things with this effect. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this to none, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this white solid. Now, some of the most common parameters you're going to be using are under the transform options. We have the anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. Now, the shortcut keys for those is anchor point A, position P, scale S, rotation R, opacity T. Now, new to After Effects 7 is the graph editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate some parameters here. So I'm going to set a stopwatch keyframe for position by turning the stopwatch on, also for scale. Then I'm going to move forward in time, move the position over it off here, scale it up. And as you can see, I have animation. Now, I want to see these in a graph view. So what I can do is click on these two graphs next to the keyframe parameter, then click on this button, which is then click on this button, which is the graph editor. Now, if I hit the tilde key, I can scale this window all the way up, and I can see my parameters here. Now, if I want to add Bezier curves or other things to it, I have some presets here, which can change the animation. I can just drag them here, and I can see how my animation will look using this very, very powerful tool. So it's definitely something you want to get into. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just shut these off and unkeyframe them. Now, there's another thing that's going to be coming up frequently, and that is an alpha channel. Now, an alpha channel is essentially the opacity of a layer based on a black and white image. So in this case, the alpha for this image, if I go to the channels, the alpha for this image is 100% white, meaning 100% opaque. Now, if I go back to the RGB channels, add an effect, transition, linear wipe, move the transition up and feather it, now if I look at the alpha, I can see that it is in fact opaque here and transparent here. So that's something that is definitely going to be coming up later. And if, it's, if you hear it, that's what it means. Let me go ahead and return back to our original state. And let's move on. Now, as you may know, I can add effects to this layer. I can choose effects, color correction, levels, and make some levels adjustments to this layer. Well, I can also make a new adjustment layer. So if I go layer, new, adjustment layer, I can add effects now to this layer, levels. Now the difference is this adjustment layer is applying itself to all the layers beneath it. So if I had a few instances or layers of video and they weren't all right next to each other, this one adjustment layer would affect everything beneath it, as you can see. 
So anyway, that's a very, very handy tool and I'm sure we'll be using that later on. Now, I did skip one thing and that is the null object. Now, a null object is kind of what you may want to use when you're using a parenting function. So say if I set up a position and move it over to the side, then I can parent this bottom layer to my null object and it will follow it along. And a null object's good for applying tracking data or any kind of data that is dynamic that you don't want to actually be applied to your source layer. So for example, this layer is now parented to this null, but if I go into the position of my first layer, I can then add a position that moves it up. And what's gonna happen is this layer is gonna move up and also move forward per the null object. So it's kind of getting the sum of both of their animations together. So that is also one little thing I wanted to point out. To get RAM previews or real-time previews with a lot of effects and things, we have the time controls. Now we can click this button over here or just hit zero on the keyboard and it will render out a RAM preview and play it back at real time if you'll notice here in the info palette. We can also change the frame rate and a few other settings, the resolution to half size so that you can get faster previews. Now we also have these effects and presets which is very, very handy. There are several animation presets that come with After Effects, text effects and other type of effects that you can just drag out to your video and create effects. So anyway, I recommend you using these animation presets, they're very powerful. Now, new to After Effects 7, again, is the workspace mode. We can switch between text, paint, and a bunch of other workspaces. Now, I wanna show you motion tracking, so I'm gonna go to the motion tracking workspace, and it brings up the motion tracking controls here, and if I select my layer and choose track motion, I can then track a point on my layer. Now, here's a track point, and if I select it, you see I can move it around by dragging the interior box. Now, I may want to speed this clip up. So what I'm gonna do is right click on it, choose time, time stretch. And the time stretch is somewhat reversed from uh, general nonlinear editors. It's stretched, uh, I guess actually it's a little bit more logical. So if I type 200%, that's essentially twice as long as the original or 50% of the actual speed. So if I hit okay, you see now this clip is actually slower. Now if I go frame by frame here by hitting page up, you'll see that every frame is duplicated twice. Now we can change that if we toggle F4, come back to our switches, we can right click on our layer, choose frame blending and turn on frame mix. And then if we turn on the frame blending switch, you'll see that every other frame is a mixture of the frame before and after. This way you get a unique frame every time. The only problem is when there's a lot of motion, you'll get this sort of warping effect, which uh, can sometimes be trouble for fast motion. Well, new to After Effects 7 is this new frame blending mode called Pixel Motion. And what it does is analyzes your frames and makes intermediate frames that are very unique. So if we preview this, you'll see that each frame is now interpolated and is unique. So if we zoom in here, each frame is different without any of that weird frame blending. Now let's go ahead and uh, change this layer back to the original speed. I'm gonna just turn the time stretch to 100% and select OK. Now new to After Effects 7 is support for HDR imagery. So what I've created is this car picture, which is high dynamic range. So as you can see, the image is blown out. But if I change the project settings to 32 bits per channel by alt or option clicking on the bits here, or BPC, which is bits per channel, change it to 32 bits per channel, now I can take advantage of some of the effects, which are 32 bits. So if I choose effects, color correction, exposure, I can now do some very cool things like expose this image down and reveal a bunch of data that was not previously there. So let me go ahead and just uh, put this window back into my project window, okay? So as you can see, there is data in those bright highlighted areas. If you use a levels adjustment or a curves adjustment, you can actually create that look without actually losing all your detail. So if I were to adjust this right, I could really get a cool look without totally killing my, my image. So anyway, I just want to uh, show you that. It's a brand new feature and it's very cool. Anyway, I think this gives you a good starting point for a lot of the tutorials we're gonna be getting into. I just wanted to kinda make sure you weren't totally in the dark. I'm Andrew Kramer and have fun.